Hey number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and persistence should be rewarded because I mean... Okay, so yes, we're going to talk about female underwear and male underwear, let's be fair. And we're going to talk about Japanese, but also Roman and medieval because I don't want to make a two minutes video. So we will include the Japanese female underwear in this video. But one thing that is important to say is that when talking about underwear, we are talking about clothing. And of course, we are talking about organic, uh, something made of an organic material, uh, fabrics that obviously uh, degrades uh, in time. So it's not easy to have a definitive answer as to what people wore but there is some information that I managed to, to gather so let's have a look okay so first we're going to start talking about the sort of underwear that was worn in Japan in ancient times then we're going to move to Rome ancient Rome and then we'll talk about the sort of underwear that was worn in the medieval period in Europe as we talk about Japan one of the first things that you notice when you go to Japan in the in our day and age and of course I've lived in Japan for a few years is that Japanese in their everyday life now just wear Western clothing however when there is a special occasion they wear their traditional clothing so both variants exist and coexist in Japan so of course we need to have a look at the sort of traditional clothing that they wear meaning yukata kimono and try to understand how far back this sort of clothing goes so the roots and when talking about kimono allegedly the early ancestors of modern day kimono are from the Heian period so absolutely samurai times so before world war ii we know that traditional men's underwear would be the fundoshi whether they be rich or poor high or low status all men wore fundoshi but what about women well as far as we understand women didn't wear fundoshi so the question should be what do women wear even today under a kimono and generally speaking traditionally speaking a woman wouldn't wear anything under a kimono. Now, with that being said, when I say anything, she wouldn't wear anything, I mean from a underwear point of view. But there are lots of different layers of clothing that are worn underneath a, a kimono. You know, wearing a kimono is quite complicated. And the closest garment to the skin is called a hadajuban. So this, in a way, might be considered a sort of undershirt. I wouldn't really call it underwear, but it's an undershirt and it's the closest thing that, that a woman wears, at least if they do it traditionally. In our day and age, you might wear undergarments and then this and then the kimono, but in the old days, most likely this would have acted as the undergarment. So this is the closest thing that we can consider to be ancient Japanese underwear for women. And of course, there are some variations. Some are one whole piece and others are two separate pieces. An interesting thing that I'd like to point out though is the existence of sarashi. Now, uh, if some of you watch anime, you probably are familiar with what a sarashi is, at least if I show you. And it's the sort of cloth, usually made of cotton or linen, that will be wrapped around the body under a kimono or under any kind of garment. It will be wrapped tightly around the midriff up to the chest. Now, historically, this could be worn by both the samurai allegedly to resist injury in a way and by women although they're for a different reason because depending on what time you're talking about there would be periods of japan where fashion sort of dictated that a slim figure was considered more fashionable and therefore this would help of course okay so what about Rome. Well, in Imperial Rome, we know that both men and women were known to wear simply wrapped loincloth. What were they made of? Well, you see, it's not easy to know because this is, of course, as I said, organic material, but most likely would have been linen as that was readily available to most people in, in society. But you have to understand that in ancient Rome, there wasn't one universal concept that everybody abide, abided to. Some people might wear something, some people did wear underwear, other people didn't, everything was acceptable. Now, what's interesting is that one thing we know for sure is that if you look at the ancient mosaic, particularly in Sicily, in uh, Villa Romana del Casale, um, we see what Roman women, at least aristocratic Roman women, uh, wore while they were training. And it's incredible because it's very, very similar to what women wear in our day and age. I mean, this picture really surprised me when I saw it and I actually did visit the place and saw it. Now, obviously, we don't have to imagine the bra to be elas elastified like it is today, uh, and the same for the, for the underwear, but it does look very reminiscent of what women wear in our day and age, so probably the fashion hasn't changed that much. Again, we don't know if everybody wore this or if it was something specific to the Roman aristocracy. Again, this is a Roman villa. This is where Rome, rich families from Rome uh, went on a holiday in Sicily, but still, 
there are also items that they are using that look very very familiar to our day modern day and age so sometimes we just think that some fashions or some objects belong to the modern time whereas they don't they've been around for a while so just wanted to show you this one because i thought it was very interesting now in the medieval period women of the period might have worn a breastband again probably made of either linen or leather there is one archaeological find that can help us un understand a little bit the situation in an austrian castle in 2012 which consists of lots of underwear that was preserved in a sealed off vault and it looks a lot like modern day brasseries and underpants so we do know that these sort of garments that now we take for granted have definitely been around since the 15th century was this specific to the upper class because it was particularly expensive or was it readily available to the common people unfortunately we don't know but one thing we know is that they existed so we have just established the medieval women did wear underpants in the 15th century and onward of course but what about before difficult to say because we don't really have archaeological evidence and you can imagine that the medieval close-minded relationship with certain parts of the body wouldn't really allow people to talk and write much about these items of clothing but it is possible because now obviously medieval men and women also wore a piece of garment called a chemise or shift now women would usually wear these underneath their petticoats or later corsets in the medieval period women wore very long dresses so it is again possible that women wore hose underneath their long dresses difficult to say again but if they did it is generally believed that it reached the knee since the dress was so long that there wasn't really any need to cover more now generally speaking when you look at men's doublets they should extend and cover almost to the upper thigh and cover completely the crotch area but as time goes on and the fashion became so that men's doublet had to extend only a little past the waist then we have the introduction of the cod piece which was used to cover the gap between the hose and the crotch because again in, in the medieval fashion you never really show that part of your body as you're walking around now when talking about underwear in ancient times one cannot do that without mentioning the Egyptians the ancient Egyptians particularly Tutankhamun now in his tomb they found 145 linen loincloths and I mean, I have like, I don't know, 20 pairs of underwear and I thought I had a lot. Close an examination of this sort of undergarment worn by the king showed that the linen used had 200 threads per inch. And if you compare that to the average Egyptian sort of loincloth, then that would only have 50. All right, number one. So well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're yet not a member of this community, become a number one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Keep commenting down below. Goodbye.